Tuesday is set to be a historic day as former President Donald Trump, the first former president to face federal charges, makes his appearance in a Miami court. The indictment includes 37 criminal counts of unauthorized possession of classified material, obstruction of justice, and making false statements to law enforcement officers. Joining us now here on The Factor Uncensored, Attorney Oliver Brown, University of Houston downtown professor, Dr. Dietrich von Biedenfeld, and Attorney Eric Dick. So, Eric, what will tomorrow look like for the president when he faces this indictment and charges and go to court in Miami? It's going to look like a circus. Uh, you're going to have a lot of people outside uh, wanting him to go to jail, not wanting him to go to jail. It's going to be, it's probably going to shut down the whole court system. It's going to look like a circus, um, kind of similar to the indictment that happened in New York. Um, you're going to have the, either if it's the, the judge or I think a magistrate, the judge there is a Trump appointee. So, you know, it's, it's going to we'll be We'll get to that later. <laughs> but, uh, Oliver, will we see the president in any, at any point in handcuffs? No, they've already decided that the Secret Service is not going to allow uh, for him to be handcuffed. He will be booked. Uh, I believe they even said he will do a mugshot, but the mugshot will not be released. And uh, basically, he'll get processed through, and they go stand in front of the judge for the official reading of the indictment, which will probably be waived by his uh, attorneys. And so it probably won't even be that long of a hearing. There may be some bond conditions, such as the surrender of the passport, things of that nature. And then they're going to be off to the races. Oh, they will probably enter in some type of scheduling order as far as discovery and pretrial. I doubt they'll set the trial tomorrow, though. Got it. And Dr. Dietrich von Biedenfeld, and this is for you as well, Eric. We're talking about Judge Eileen Cannon, who is a Trump appointee. Uh, two years on the bench, many people are saying that's not enough for this level of a case involving a former president. And then they're saying there may be some bias because she offered him a victory during the preliminary um, arrest, or, or sorry, search, and then there was an appeal to that. Do you think she will stay on the case? It seems so, and a lot of these things are randomly assigned, or at least assigned in some sort of sequence where it seems random, but uh, we've already seen this sort of argument of bias or favoritism, and she hasn't been removed from those cases yet. These are lifetime Article Three appointees, so she's been appointed. The ABA ranked number of uh, Trump appointees as unqualified. Of course, we haven't seen the Biden administration move the ABA or American Bar Association back into their informal role of approving. So these presidents like to appoint these folks and then they expect favors. I don't see her being removed. And Eric and Oliver, this is for both of you. The Justice Department could have filed this case in Washington, D.C. Instead, they did it in Florida. Obviously, that's where everything happened. But they had the option of filing it in Washington, D.C., where there were more Democrats likely to serve, and in, in Florida, less likely. Well, they had to put it in Florida because of that's where the actual crime occurred. And under federal procedure and things of that nature, you had to put it in uh, in actual Miami, although they did use some grand juries in D.C., which that's going to bring up uh, questions later on, which you will probably see certain type of what are called interlocutory appeals based off of discovery and obtaining information out of D.C. to use in Miami. And that's where you're going to see a lot of fight that's going to drag this out. I think beyond the November 2024 election. Yeah, it'll absolutely go on beyond the November 2024 uh, election, and I think that creates a really interesting question. Do you think it will start before, though? I, I like, don't know. while the election is going no, on, how I, likely is that? Very unlikely. I think you're going to see motions to, you know, quash. You're going to see, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things that are going to happen. But I think Trump has a favorable judge that's a federal appointed judge there for life that's almost, it's going to be very difficult for the Justice Department to have her recused or taken off of the bench for hearing the case. Um, you know, absent of, you know, impeachment of her, you know, which it's the same level of impeachment as Trump. That's the only way you can remove a federal judge. I think she may dismiss the case depending on the different motions they make. I think there's a statistical chance, and I also think there's a high statistical chance that the jury, um, there's going to be Republicans that, uh, the, the federal judge picks the jury. Mm -hmm. It's completely different with a federal judge. The, the, the attorneys may even be able to participate, may not. 
So I think the Justice Department's going to have a very uh, uphill battle with this whole uh, this whole case. I think they might have bit off more than they than they thought they could chew. All right, let's see. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us tonight.